Hello and welcome to the Accessibility in Gaming podcast, the podcast about the accessibility, successes, and setbacks of all things gaming. I'm your host, Shelby Farley, also known as The Blind Gamer. In today's episode, I will be discussing Fall Guys, a battle royale game where you play as bean like characters, completing several rounds to see who will be the lone winner of the crown. At the start of a show, which is basically all of the rounds played in a single session, there are 60 players competing against each other, and then each round, several players are weeded out depending on the parameters set by that game. Sometimes it's a set number of people get through to the next round. Sometimes it's a timed round where you have to complete the challenge within a certain amount of time to get to the next round. It just depends from game to game. There are several different types of games, ranging from obstacle courses to trying to steal things from other players to rolling a ball down a hill or even a giant memory game. Overall, Fall Guys is a great game, even accessibility-wise. I really don't have too many problems with the game, so this might be a shorter episode. But I still wanted to cover it because there are some accessibility issues that I've run into. But one thing the game does really well is contrast between colors. Most of the levels are very high contrast. Fall Guys in general is filled with bright, vivid colors that make it pretty easy for me at least to tell where one object starts and another one ends. There are very few situations where I find the contrast is poor and it's harder for me to see. But for the most part, I don't have any problems with the contrast because the colors stand out from each other very well. Sizing of different objects is sometimes an issue. The Fall Guys themselves are pretty small, and so they're a little bit harder to see, but I understand why you wouldn't want to make them larger because there's 60 of us at the beginning, and so if you make them larger, that's going to be even more chaotic and hard to see and more cluttered than it already is. So I understand not making them larger. Plus, you'd have to rework the entire game to make the courses larger. And it would just be a huge hassle. And I find the game is playable enough despite the size of the Fall Guys. The only other time where I find that the size of in-game objects is an issue is in games like Tail Tag where you have to steal things from other players or go grab different things because those are so small and really hard for me to see. I don't know that I've ever won individual tail tag just because the tails are so small. So I wish they were bigger to make the playing field a little more even for visually impaired players as well because right now I pretty much just run around and wait for the timer to run out because I can't see either the tail that I'm supposed to be grabbing or whatever the case may be. Another issue that I have found is text size and also font style. In some places, the text size is okay. Certain menu items are large enough for me to see, not super easily, but without having to use other magnification sources to read what they say. And then the title of each round is big enough for me to see Again, not very easily, but at least I can see what it says. However, the font style is difficult for me to see. For example, the K's look like R's, and so some of the letters are harder for me to read, even if the text size is big enough, just because the font style isn't the easiest for me to decipher. Also, in other places like inside settings and with the instructions on how to play each individual round that pop up before the game starts, the text is too small. I can't read it. The text in the options menu, it's okay because I can use my magnifier on my phone to zoom in to see what it says, but the text that describes how to play each game that shows up before the round starts, there's no way. I have no way of reading it because there's not enough time for me to pull out my phone, open the magnifier, zoom in and make sure the camera's focused, and then read what it says. 
So basically right now, my only options are to memorize the names of each round and how to play them. And then whenever the screen pops up, look at the name and then try to recall that information from memory. Or the other option, which is what I typically do, is to wait for the round to start and then basically figure out how to play as I go. Which for a lot of the rounds is okay. It's not ideal, but but it's okay because I can just walk up to an obstacle and glance at it and have a general idea of what I need to do to get through it. But in other situations, again, like Tail Tag or other games where you have a specific challenge that you're supposed to do that's not as obvious, I have no idea what I'm doing. One example of this is from an older season and you had to grab eggs from the center or from other players and put them into your team's colored section. And then another one would be tail tag, where you have to run around and try to get a tail and then keep it away from other players. So with those games, it's not just get to the end of the course. It's something specific that you have to do. And so whenever I enter those kind of rounds, I have to basically just watch other players and see if I can tell what they're doing. And then I might be able to figure out how to play it, but even then it's hard for me to tell. So in those situations, when I start the round, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do, especially if it's a new type of round that just came out that I've never played before. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. So if I'm playing by myself, I basically just have to watch other players and hope that I can figure out what to do by watching them. But by that point, I'm way behind and don't stand a very good chance of getting through to the next round because I've spent most of the time watching other players to try to figure out what to do. So that really sucks. So for text size in general, especially like in the settings and whatnot, making the font larger would be an easy solution. Or, of course, text-to-speech, where what is written on the screen is read out loud. Which is my personal favorite option for any game, because it just makes things so much easier and reduces eye fatigue and whatnot. This would be even more amazing with the instructions on how to play each round. Because even if it's large print, there's so little time in between, and I take a while to read things, no matter how big the font is. I still read very slowly. And so there wouldn't be enough time for me to read the instructions, even if the font is large, because of how fast the round starts. So having text-to-speech or some kind of audio instructions would be great, because then I could listen to them and be able to understand how to play faster than trying to read large print, and hoping that I can at least make it through a line or two before the round starts. The last issue that I would like to discuss is that sometimes... Either when you start a round or whenever you respawn, you may be facing the wrong way. And I get that there are typically arrows to let you know which way you need to go. And those are a huge help because I have a hard time knowing which way I need to go anyway. So if I start facing the wrong direction, at least the arrows are there to let me know which way to go. But... It takes me a minute to figure out where the arrows are and then to go the right way that I'm supposed to go. So it would be nice if there was either something that would pop up on screen that's very big and obvious, kind of like in Mario Kart, or if there would be an audio tone that plays if you're going the wrong way or someone saying wrong way, just some kind of notification that you're going the wrong way, because potentially that could be the difference between qualifying and being eliminated or winning the crown and losing the crown. So I know part of the challenge is figuring that out for yourself and just trying to stay on top of that, but it would be nice if there was a way to know that I'm going the wrong way so that I don't end up going way backwards and undoing all the progress that I just made. (laughs) So those are the accessibility issues that I have found with Fall Guys. If there are any that you've run into, please let me know. I couldn't find too many. The font size being too small and the font style being unclear, the certain in-game objects being too small, and getting disoriented and going the wrong way either because it spawned me facing the wrong way or I got lost. Those are really all the issues that I found, but I'm sure there are more out there. So if there are any that you can think of, please let me know. In the next episode, I will be discussing Dead by Daylight. 
So subscribe to the podcast and follow me on social media to be notified as soon as that episode goes live. If you have a game that you would like me to discuss in a future episode, or you are a game developer and you would like me to test your current or upcoming game for any accessibility issues, please email me at accessibilityingaming at gmail.com. Also, follow me on my social media. You can find me at Shelby Farley, C-H-E-L-B-Y-F-A-R-L-E-Y, or The Blind Gamer, T-H-E-B-L-I-N-D-G-A-Y-M-E-R. Thank you so much for listening to the Accessibility in Gaming podcast.